we are just going to be talking about building the Sanctum Sanctorum. As you can see, I'm using the regular old uh, camera because I have the other camera set up to show you the altar. Now, for many of you, uh, or some of you, you're we're not all shamans or work in a shamanistic fashion or follow the shaman path. And for those of you who don't, the other path is called the hermetic tradition. And that's what I follow. Now, I feel like I am surrounded by shamans because I have rarely found other people who do follow the hermetic tradition. And I don't know what the stigma is behind it, but truthfully speaking, it's just as valid and just as uh, valuable to, um, anybody who's going to be either uh, doing the works or needs to be protected. Um, it's just that simple. Not all of us are going to work exactly the same way. And uh, when it comes down to it, there, it's got to be somewhere close to a 50-50 split. So today we're showing you my way as, uh, what is his name, Dr. from Lilo and Stitch. Um, an oh, I can't remember his name. So, as, as he said, now we do things my way. Hi, Duxos. So we're going to do things and show you how I operate. Now, keep in mind, I'm having to remember this from a book that I no longer, that I no longer actually have because uh, it fell to pieces. It fell to pieces and rained out one page at a time from my backpack while driving on my motorcycle. So that was the end of that. And um, as much as I wish I could have kept it, I guess I wasn't supposed to have it anymore. Now, I'm, I pieced everything together, and the only thing that I didn't include is the subjugation of the elements. I have found books since then, but they all seem to follow that same tradition. I took a different path. Now, I'm not saying you have to. If you feel like it, you can piece this out, find the words that I omitted, and you know, be a hard case to the elements. That's not up to me. That's up to you. That's your conscience. I, however, decided that I didn't want slaves. I wanted friends. And so I said, you're free to come and go. And if you do stay, I will help you and you can help me. And that's what friends do for each other. And uh, apparently I'm just the first one to offer them that option. So I'd like to keep the trend going. But once again, you do whatever this tells you you should do. So um, now you'll notice once again that I don't have the camera set up, the big one on me. It's actually set up on the altar. I do apologize because it is going to be reversed for you. You're going to be seeing things from the north, and it's uh, might be a little disorienting. Now, the setup is very specific. Uh, let me switch the cameras. Oh, by the way, say hello, Joel. Hello. So I'm having a little problem with my mouse. Uh, you might want to mute my mic real fast. And I'm having okay. I'm having some issues. Okay, well, I'll I got you muted. So I'm going to be changing the camera around so that you guys can see. And here is what the altar looks like. Now, for some of you, I'm pretty sure this is going to look kind of familiar. Uh, for the, anybody who's actually uh, dealt with Wiccanism, uh, Wicca is most of the elements are are derived heavily, heavily from. Um, Thaumaturgy and some of the more ancient practices. Let me see if I can center this up. So it's just me. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have this is in the north. That is the uh, plate with uh, salt on it. That's to represent earth. Then we have here in the west, this is a, a chalice. Now you can fill it with mead, wine, mineral water, whatever it is that um, has meaning to you. This is just a candle, as you can see, a candle and a nice holder. I've had this probably the longest of all of my in implements. And on the far side is a folded up fan. Now, normally speaking, these are actually pretty easy to be able to get in your household and work with. The only thing that you're not, you probably aren't familiar with is what's in the middle. This is called a sensor. N normally, you would fill this and ha have the windows open, I hope, uh, you're not stupid enough to do this with the windows closed because the sensor uses charcoal in order to heat and burn um, the, uh, to burn uh, resin pellets of uh, different incenses, which is a true incense burning. And you put frankincense and myrrh in there, and that's in order to change the energy in the house so that it does not uh, it does not comport well with the enemy. And we'll explain that probably a little bit later. Now, if you were, say, a Wiccan or somebody who was working in more advanced practices, the fan would be replaced by a knife. 
uh, the candle would not be replaced by anything. This would be replaced by uh, a more uh, valuable chalice of some kind. I actually have one that is made out of ceramic. It's beautiful, looks like the ocean. And this would be replaced by a pentacle with the point facing this way, which is north. So uh, these are, as I said, easy to get. You can have would have all of these laying around your house, so you will not need to worry about going out and buying anything. Just a little table, nice cloth, setting this up, making sure to orient to the north and having everything in the correct locations. It's very important. If you misalign things, you're going to have trouble because you're going to have to start again from scratch. So, any questions so far? No, everything sounds good. It, you, you sound like me when uh, when we were interviewing Chris because I was pretty much, you know, I didn't know what to ask because that shamanism, I, I don't I don't really know. You missed out on that one. We're going to bring him back so that you you two can can talk a lot. Awesome. So. Um, Okay, so the uh, ritual itself is not difficult to, to perform. And what you should do is before doing it, make sure that you wash and clean yourself in a shower. Uh, it, it does help. It's not required, but it does help a bit. Let me switch the cameras over and back to me. Hopefully. This chair is seriously squeaky. Sorry. I, I got to replace mine too, well, at least two of them in the house. So uh, cleaning yourself in order to be able to clean off negative energies, you're bathing in, in water and hopefully cleansing the, all of it away. Now, depending on the tradition that you follow, they'll tell you to do things either sky clad, AKA naked. Uh, I don't see the point in that. Um, <laughs> I like how you had to get close to the camera so everybody understood what you were saying. Yeah, so there's, I, I, I totally, if you can't stand the touch of, of clothing as a distraction while you're doing this, you got issues that they make pills for. So, uh, yeah, I just, I never understood that whole line of thinking. And, but sticking to clothing that is natural fibers really helps because i noticed the more unnatural fibers that are in contact with me the more uh icky i can i tend to feel but once you get to a certain level of energy work it pretty much doesn't do that much to it it's more of a minor hindrance like a scratch on your leg as opposed to a shackle around your ankle but in the beginning you're going to want to stick to as natural of fibers as possible um as i said natural fibers cotton hemp linen it, it's it's also just cleaner better sure. for the planet because it's crew polyester and walmart and all their polyester stacks anyway not the 60s or 70s anymore <laughs> so oh my god <laughs> polyester leisure suits comes to mind immediately <laughs> and they go oh it's so comfortable it's, it's like no nah. feels dirty uh, look, I'm wearing a petroleum product. It's just one step away from Vaseline. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I I also included in the uh, in in the low bar, as you probably can see, I have the entire ritual the way that I normally would do it. And this is in order to set up the protections in your house. Remember, little table, nice cloth, set the things up in the correct directions. And everything after that is uh, is now the important stuff, which is doing the walk. Remember that unless you are undoing anything, you never walk anti-clockwise. You only walk clockwise. And the, the proper term for that is deosil. You only walk deosil, which is clockwise. Okay. Um, if you do it the other way, which is called wittershins, that's in order to dispel or to undo. Now you start on the... Uh, the new moon, which is also known as the Rosh Chodesh. And you will continue until you, re you get to the full moon, which is called the Esbat. Uh, it's, it's amazing how all this stuff comes back, you know? <laughs> Sorry. It, as soon as I sat down to think about it, it just, I, I'd done this too much, I, I'm afraid. I'd done it way too much. And so there's Joel again. See? Hey, Joel. Oh, sorry. Hey, Joel. So, and, um, uh, you you'll continue. You can, can sorry continue until uh, the the full moon, 
and then you can stop there unless you feel the need to continue. It is a daily thing that can be done daily, almost like a prayer, because essentially that's what you're doing and you're setting up your energy. So let's get into it and I will walk us through the entire ceremony. Okay, let me pull up the, my notes so that I can go through it slowly. All right, folks. Okay. So, he's right there on the ground. I don't know if you can see him. Who? Rolling around. The puppies. Oh, oh, hold on a second. Let me see. There's the puppies. Oh, there she is. Okay. So switching over to this, and we're switching the camera to the altar. I wish there was an easier way to do this. So I apologize for the lag in this. Okay, now we're looking at the altar again. Now you're going to approach, let's say you're going to do this. You're not going to do this obviously in your bedroom like I have it right now. Uh, you're going to do it in a main living room where you got plenty of, of room. And you're going to enter from this side, which is the west side, to basically the side of the fan. And you're going to come in and hopefully you're not naked. <laughs> Sorry. And you're going to enter from the east and stand to the west of the altar. Sorry, to the east of the altar. And you're going to say, <clears throat> I have come to do today to do the great works. And as such, I need to, uh, I must create the space to do them. <clears throat> from that side, you're going to say, in the east I stand, the element is air, the season is spring, the time is morning. I call forth the element of thought and will to aid me now in my works. Then you're going to walk from here, clockwise, to here. In the south I stand, the element is fire. The season is summer, the time is noon. I call forth the element of knowledge and creation to aid me now in my works. Then you're going to take up Mr. Lighter or Matches, and you're going to light a candle. It's kind of gratuitous, but I'll light it just the same. Uh, Sean, is there any reason in particular that your camera is silver or your candle is silver? It was what I had if left over from my marriage. Just asking. The color really doesn't have that big of a significance. It's just what I had laying around, kind of surprising. We'd gotten them for the wedding, and we we kept one from the from the wedding stands there. Actually, two. This is the last one. Normally speaking, I would either choose blue, or white, or black. Uh, black. Uh, the whole idea of black being negative is kind of foolish. Now, the reason why I would choose those colors is because those are common, and they will fit into this kind of a holder. Otherwise, my total preference is to get a big fat candle, get a whole new candle holder, because I really want one, and to burn beeswax, because that's much better and it's much more in keeping with the, my um, earth aesthetic. Because <coughs> though I may not be a shaman, my connection to the earth is ridiculously strong, especially after what Joel did. We'll discuss that another day. So, <clears throat> yeah, silver, because what I had around. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to walk from here around to here. And the, remember, you're facing the altar. You're going to face the, the glass. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. Sorry. When you light the candle, um, you're going to say, I call upon the sacred fire of Michael Spear to alight now this ceremony. May Michael Spear, if you want to say it correctly, it's Mikhail, but I'm just going to say it Michael for you all because then you'll wonder what the hell I'm saying. May Michael Spear make the sacred fire appear above, below, within, without, appear, fire, appear. Then you light the candle and walk around to here. And the Michael we're talking about is the Archangel Michael. So for any of you who are wondering, not Michael, the crackhead down the street who, who you know sells dime bags, not him. Okay, so keep that in your in your head because that's mostly where most of this your what you're addressing your abilities. Okay, you walk clockwise to to stand in the west. In the west I stand, the element is water, the season is autumn, the time is dusk. I call forth the element of daring and healing to aid me now in my works. Walk clockwise from here, around to the north, and face south, of course, facing the, the, the plate. In the north I stand, the element is fire, is earth, the season is winter, the time is midnight. I call forth the element of silence and patience to aid me now in my works. Now you're going to walk around, once again, remember, as I said, clockwise, all the way around until you come back past east and stand in the south and face the altar. And you're going to do this. It's called exalting. 
Oh boy, change the camera back over so I can show you. This will get easier with time, folks. Sorry, be patient. Now, to exalt is to do this. Basically, throw your head back and feel the energy. And um, I like to think of it as uh, Goku about to go Super Saiyan. You know, think of it like this. Okay? But it's a little bit softer, and you're not trying to be so animated, if you know what I mean. And I'm going to turn the camera back on for Joel so we can see his response to that one. <laughs> <laughs> like the quickening and uh, uh, Highlander. Thank you. Exactly. And there's a lot of, the, trust me, after you get, you start doing this for a while and you've got the, the altar set up, you start to feel it when the energy comes in and exulting actually causes a head rush. And that's where it all starts. From there, the energy moves forward and it's just, it's really, it's really good. Uh, it's, it's one of the, it, it, it's like the big payoff in in the, the whole thing because after that you feel kind of heady and uh, like something has decided to make sure that you have more energy than you thought was possible and it just keeps building up. Okay. So you walk uh, back around and then stand in the south and you, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to point north. For me, it's this direction. And you're going to imagine a point about 10 feet in front of you and the reason why I'm saying 10 feet in front of you be is because if you try to do this too big and encompass your whole house on the very first try, you're probably going to have a horrible time. Um, you may not be able to keep this thing going for very long. So we're just trying to create a space around the altar first because the altar is not going to be broken down. You're just going to do this again and again. And eventually you're going to fill up the bubbles that you're going to create. And this is how you do it. You point to the north and you turn clockwise all the way around, imagining a burning line maintaining itself all the way around until you come back around to the north and it connects with the original point. Okay. <clears throat> and the next one is going to be up above you, point, and then down to the east, below you, all the way back up again to the top, same searing line. This one's the only one that's going to start someplace not quite, uh, you know, obvious. You're going to start by pointing down b below you, in front of you, uh, and imagine 10 feet below the ground, and keep going all the way up, over, behind you, back down to the original position. Now, if these circles seem familiar, if you ever look at a gyro, a gyro is going to have those same circles in exactly that same fashion so that they can spin. And all of them, if lined up, would, if they spun really fast, uh, would actually create a sphere. And that's what you're going to do next is you're going to imagine them spinning uh, on their axis. And as you're doing that, you say, three circles have I drawn, that of space, that of time, and that of events. Without our other worlds, but this is mine. I am its ruler. I am its creator. And so mode it be. <coughs> Then comes the next part as you're set, you're, once the circles have begun to spin in your mind and you begin to feel them now scintillating with energy and completely blocking in this entire space, you now address the elements. In your presence, I am sacred elements. You were tasked by our master to, be, to ever be enemies of the enemy of all, and as such, they flee before you. I invoke thee and all aspects of thine energy within myself and this altar, that I might do the great works in safety. I ask thee now to bless my altar and assist me in making the space a place to think, a warm home, a domicile of healing, and hearth to know peace in. In the name of the law, I call you now. Do what thou wilt was said to me, and as thou wilt, so mote it be, for love shall be the whole of the law, love under will. That is the main law. Now, if, you, if you've never seen our video on Love is the Law, please go and watch it. It's, it, it is the, the main law of almost every religion that courts peace and, and serenity, from Christianity to Buddhism. Am, what, am I wrong, Joel? No, you're right. And so, your thoughts? Uh, no, I, I was just um, enjoying this, actually. I think, yeah, I'm sure you see that. <laughs> and the next part is the lock on the door to keep you safe. In the name of hospitality, may none enter here with ill will, and may no evil find succor here upon my hearth. 
by the way, I actually had to pull this one out of that other book that mom brought home. Thinking it was another book, the one from Irish Spells and Protection, Invoking Hospitality. <laughs> oh, that was when I, I actually, it took me nearly a year to get that in here in, in order to seal the, the bedroom so it was safe. The rest of the house was a nightmare, but the, my, at least I could sleep in peace. <laughs> and yeah, so I thank you, dear elements, for your touch upon mine altar and home. Go in peace until I call for your aid once more in friendship and fellowship. Now, the last part is actually the invocation of learning. And I leave that there because it's really important. The elements are representative within learning. To will is air. To know is fire. To dare is water. And to keep silent is earth. And these are all represented in the aspects of learning as well as in the elements that protect you. And the final intonation of love shall ever be the law. And you exalt one last time and then you can leave. Put the everything where it needs to be. You can, you can move things back to where it's supposed to be. But please leave all the items on the altar each day and keep doing it repeatedly for at least the, from the full moon, sorry, the new moon to the full moon. However long that takes to get it done. And if you need to get, repeat it, repeat it. Do it again and again and again. I did it for a year before it actually made sure that everything was copacetic in my environment. And this was after Joel had gone into the uh, Army, uh, Air Force rather. And uh, so, yeah, I was, I was pretty much you know, on my lonesome. Okay, so now questions. I have none. Um, it's funny. The one thing that I was going to say is um, the clockwise rotation is um, also common in in um, a lot of shamanic um, systems. Mm -hmm. Except for uh, we usually start in on the east. That's where the sun rises. That's where we start as well, in the east. Oh, okay. Right. If you if, if you if you look in the start sorry, with the east too. Yeah, if you look in the low bar, you'll see it starts with the starts mm -hmm. with the dawn and the, the uh, element is air. But I think for you guys, the element is fire. Yes. Yeah. So it's a little different. That's that's right. the that's one of the slight changes. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. You're that's that's it right there. I think that was um, the other thing I was going to mention. So. So that was uh, that was the entire ceremony in order to set up the protection in your home, and you leave the, the altar in place once again. And uh, at some point in time, I may show you the the lighting of the sensor, but I'm not going to do it in this bedroom because I, I have to keep the windows closed in order to not overload the cameras, and also because it will really burn really fast, and you don't burn charcoal in your home, not without windows open. I mean, you do that, and if you want to try and drive everything out, but it's not. Um, it's not necessary in this house. This was done repeatedly for 14 days, almost eight years ago. So the house is already set. And I'll once you've done it enough, you can set up anchor points. And the anchor points are the symbols that stay in the room. And in, in this case, it would be like an, on the eastern wall. The I have the sword. In the southern wall, we ha I I keep my wand on the wall. And on the uh, western wall, there's a chalice on a on a shelf. And of course, then there's the pentacle of protection to the north, which is uh, hanging on a nail. Yeah. And these keep the uh, protection in place. You can take them down temporarily to work with them, but you need to get them back within, say, uh, 14 days, or else you got to do the whole process all over again because it really cracks the entire energy sphere. So, and as you do the the, the ceremony itself, each time you're going to feel like you're pumping up the energy within the spheres. They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it eventually gets to the point where they're past your backyard and down to the street, etc. And they, they go way beyond the limits of your home. So, uh, got to let Buttons out. He wants to go to the bathroom. So, let, let's just let Joel talk for a sec. Oh, so. Okay. There. My wife is camera shy, so I had to make sure she saw the camera. But uh, yeah, that's. I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, we definitely have to say um, with 
how he's talking about using an altar and building a sanctum uh, for sh uh, shamanic purposes. Uh, for most shamans, you're going to probably make uh, like a medicine circle. Uh, usually you'll find a place, a place of power for you that you will set that up at. Um, you can actually do it in your house if you wanted to or around your house. Uh, Where's your setup? I take my with me and my heart is something I learned from one of the books that you uh, showed me. Uh, I practiced it enough where I set up where I am and I learned I learned something to do that with um, Reiki. So wherever I travel, I can pretty much set up and use about 15, 20 minutes. Um, it's usually temporary, it's never permanent. Um, just when I do the medicine circle, it becomes permanent. Yeah, with once the, you've done this repeatedly and you set up the anchor points, also it, using the hermetic tradition, the protection travels with you, and it means that you know, that the, that this is sort of like your powerhouse here and your center of protection because it's your hearth, and it protects everybody, including your family. Um, and visitors it, that are allowed and, you, that are inside your domain right it it's it's one of those things that it's just a polite protection also and it, it's wonderful because a lot of people when they come into the space if they uh they mean ill they usually don't feel comfortable crossing the hearth uh and even people who who don't mean ill who want to come in realize that there's something at the door and it's like wow i better ask permission before i come in <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's what happened with you when you were coming. It's like, wait, like, can I come in? It's like, oh, you crazy man! Of course you can come in. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things. So it looks like we don't have a whole lot of people watching today, but oh well. I, 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 get I think it's um, probably going to throw people off. Uh, I think you announced the the changes the show last week. So yeah. it, might, it might take a little bit for some people to, to um, get up to speed because I, I had noticed like you had posted that you wasn't going to be on Facebook that much. Mm -hmm. And then um, as I was looking through, I saw that there was, I was on YouTube and I saw that there was like a change of time and stuff. So I was, yeah. I was on top of it because I had this whole week off except for... They LC me three days in a row last week. I don't know what happened with that. That was weird. Uh, so well, I was asked to change the date because people were having trouble with doing the Fridays because for them it's like the end of the week and they want to go out and party and stuff. Uh, I, I, I thought it had merit. So switching to perhaps having having it be like a Wednesday. And in the past when we did them on Wednesdays, my God, we had tons of people, especially if we did it in the evening. The later yeah. in the evening, the more people showed up. True. So I, I just I figured it would be better just switch it to uh, to, to a Wednesday and and uh, see what happens. It was uh, my schedule really doesn't matter because I could work any day of the week. It's not like my Fridays are going to be my days off. Uh, you usually work, but most Fridays though. I mean that's why. Yeah, I, mean. <laughs> I know. So. I know. <laughs> Hopefully they they change the schedule. Um, I have a bunch of time coming off. So. So who is with us today? Duck Sauce was there. I didn't see anybody else. Uh, no. Yep. Right now it's just me in that room. It doesn't show anybody else. Oh well. Duck Sauce must have left. Uh, maybe just have some issues with the. Sometimes you know, especially depending on what we're doing, we have to a tendency to have some technical issues. Speaking of, I don't know what's going on, but my mouse is eating up my batteries. And I don't know really? If I'm for a new mouse or what? Probably. What? Which kind do you have? <clears throat> oh well, no. It's time to you need to just charge it. Uh, plug it in on, in the underbelly and charge it. I have put in, you know, those new, more power, longer life, Duracell, and I went through four of them. I just put some in to, today, and they went dead. And I well, I thought, aren't, that's the Apple mouse, so that's a rechargeable mouse. Uh, no, this one isn't rechargeable. Okay. Well, then it's it's probably just that it's being it's it's staying on for some reason. 
and because uh, I've got this Logitech one, and and it eats through one battery really fast. I missed the one that had the two batteries. That's what I usually use. Um, for the M five oh something or other, and that one is a good one. I don't like this one, or is it three oh four? I think it's the M three oh four. This one here was an attempt to try, to try and find out if I could get an extra button, and it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. <laughs> it, it sorry. I wonder how many people like coming in here and hearing us uh, hear us talk about our mundane things. Yeah, Duck Sauce is still there. Duck Sauce. Oh, check it out. I, I got a new new chain to put everything on. Uh, it's much nice. more comfortable than the other one. See? Very nice. Yeah. Feels yeah, much better. I still got the bees, the Galaxy bees on without the hook because that's going to go on the Dreamcatcher. So is I. I've got the chat on real time. There shouldn't be any kind of a delay. I, I, I made sure that there was no delay on it, but th this is YouTube, so go figure. I don't know what to say. Um, in the control panel, I took all of the, the, the slowing down off. Only thing I did was leave a thing in place so that if somebody says something and it's rude, it'll either hold it up or remove it. Um, or if it says something controversial, uh, uh, uses uh, an expletive, uh -huh. uh, but otherwise, I mean, you, you have a you can do two messages every sixty seconds, and I can't take that off. That's something that they put in place. I just it, I can't I can't remove it. Okay. I wonder. I wish they had a, a face palm emoji on YouTube. They need one. Yeah. Most of the lag that we get for the chat for, is on my end because I'm looking through StreamYard. And StreamYard has a, another further lag on when people are talking. If I was looking at uh, YouTube, there it would be way behind because YouTube has always has a about a 10 or 15 second uh, delay on some things. And I tried to reduce it down to milliseconds and it works, but it's still it, it, going through YouTube. I think it adds another 30 second um, 30 seconds lag. So uh, I got to tell you, if this was a raid, we wouldn't be able to run this one successfully. <laughs> like too much lag. Where is the server? Holy crap. So what are you thinking of the lots? They're coming in pretty good, huh? Yep. It's starting to look like the, it's like Kage from the from the old days of Shadowrun. Yeah. <laughs> Except they flop everywhere. They've got to get longer so you can tell them where to go. Otherwise, it, when you do that, it looks like an antenna. <laughs> 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 it's like the, oh, my devil horns are showing. Oh, they, were, they just looked insectile doing this. <laughs> yeah, when, after I wear my, my um, do-rag at night, they bend. So kind of... Did they break your computer, Janice? Okay. Not too worried. Hi, Janice. That's kind of concerning to me. Yeah. Okay. When I went to the, uh, this is funny. I, I have to mention this on air. When I went to the doctors because I had a cineresis in my eye. That's um, when a portion of the the vitreous liquefies for no un, no known reason and uh it causes all this stuff to suddenly jump up in your eye and it's a partial uh i think it's, she called it a partial vitriol detachment and it's so small it's so tiny that she had to she this poor lady was looking for nearly 40 minutes to find it um and so uh, i'm i'm going into the to the to the office and we're sitting there and all of a sudden all the TVs go dead and it's nine o'clock in the morning and I'm waiting for, for space to see someone. And all of a sudden they come out and say, Oh, everybody's got to go home. Our, our internet's down because the people who are trimming the trees in the back clipped right through their internet line and spectrum has got a six hour delay. <laughs> so I said, no, I'm not going. This is an emergency. This isn't just, I'm waiting to see a doctor. This is, this is, potentially a detached retina like well we don't know what to tell you i'm sitting right here until you guys know what to do it's like because paper still takes ink it's funny there was a i saw uh somebody had put a post on that they had went and got hired 
at Comcast because even that's faster than waiting from the come and fix the problem. <laughs> you learn how to fix them yourself. We're back. <laughs> Yeah, th this was this was part of the the fun stuff from about three weeks ago, which is right after we got home from vacation. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was at work. I was at work, and I was like, "Good Lord!" I told I told a couple of people. They was like, "Good Lord, get to the emergency room." <laughs> yeah, and so I, I'm on my way to like, so, emergency room now. So, so I'm, I'm heading to the emergency room because you told me emergency room, and I'm driving as fast as I can, right? With with what looks like snow globe material, doing this in front of in my in my eye. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm going blind, and I didn't realize it wasn't wasn't serious. And then because I'd already contacted the doc, the people who were uh, the um the after hours doctor, I, I can't remember her name. And she, she says to me, so uh, she calls me back and says, wait, I just consulted with two uh, ophthalmologists. It's like, yeah, yeah. She says, says, it's not serious. I'm like, the hell it isn't. <laughs> Look are, you me it's not, is, are you telling me this isn't serious? Cause it's not your eye. She says, no, no, no. See, when was the last time you saw a flash? I said, I said about nine. It was three of them. And, uh, she says, well, is it flashing now? No. He says, well, then it's a cineresis. The hell is a cineresis? <laughs> well, well, let me explain it to you. Yes, before my heart rate goes above 150 would be a good time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, God. So let me tell uh, you what a cineresis is. Uh, right? Yeah. And, and she proceeds to tell me what is it? It's a liquefaction of the of the the vitreous humor. But it was like, okay, and that means like, it means you're going to be okay, but it's you're going to see a lot of weird stuff for a while. Uh, Why am I not calmed? Yeah, <laughs> you know the amount of weird shit I see. So, <laughs> so uh, that's so uh, like they get me an appointment. They get me an appointment for the. <laughs> I mean, this the stuff is doing like waves of this going. In front of my eyes. If I look left and right, it's like, yeah. <laughs> right. okay. So, <laughs> so the following mornings when I go into the into the doctor's office, and this lady is is poking me in in the eye with this really bright light, right? With with a really bright. At yeah. first, she starts off with these goggles that are like this, and she's look nice, nice black lady reminds me of, um, uh, oh God, what's her name that was on Martin. Uh, Oh, Gina? Yeah, her. And she's looking and she's doing this and looking at my eye from a distance. And I'm thinking, how are you going to see things way from back in Timbuktu? Right? And she's just scour scourging my eye and telling me where to look. And she keeps getting closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, you can't, you, the only way you're going to get any closer is if you're going to end up in back of me. So then she pulls the machine out and puts it in front and says, stick your chin here, right? And then we start doing this with my chin. Oh, like, is this comfortable? It's like, no. no. <laughs> so. We get to right about here, and then she starts poking me in the eye again. And she's like, I just can't find it. I'm like, what, it, what are you looking for? Like, I'm looking for the spot. The spot. Is that a technical <laughs> term? I didn't ask her that because I didn't want to be a smart ass and have her go, get out of my office. Yeah. And <laughs> that so, is not be a technical term. It's, like, it's the spot. It's like, what spot? We're, we're detached. I'm like, okay, does it help if I tell you where I saw the flash bulbs? She says, yes. I'm like, you could have asked. Like, where did you see him? I'm like, right here. She's like, okay. So now she starts looking down there. And she makes another five minutes worth of passes. Oh, I found it. I'm glad. Because <laughs> my, my right eye is now seeing nothing but like the like the scanning phase from the from video drone. Uh -oh. Like this. So, hey, hey. That's it. Oh, I get points. I get geek reference. points. I get geek points. <laughs> High five. That's a great reference. That is. So, Woo. so yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that. Yes. And um, it's, and she finally, she goes, oh, I see it. It's so tiny. Nope. There is no detachment of the retina. There's, there isn't even any scarring. It must, from what it looks like, it released violently and let go really fast. So that's the reason why you're seeing all the stuff. But that should go away within like a month or two, and true, true, it's it's mostly gone now. It's a little bit hazy. <laughs> Listen, lady, <laughs> a month or two. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it. It was odd. By that day, it was not anywhere near as bad. Just, oh, and for the rest of it, your brain will train itself to look around. It's like that's not how my brain works. I yeah. see every damn one of these things. So uh, fortunately, it's it's beginning. It, it's all beginning to settle down, and it, it's, I'm doing better. I should actually go get some herbal eyebright um, standardized because that would help. And I just started taking preformed A the other day, and that also began to make a difference about three days ago. Um, uh, if you ha get floaters, vitamin A is really helpful for helping to reacquire and subsume them. And uh, uh, it's hard to find a dry form. Almost nobody carries it. So I had to go, screw it. I'll just get a three, $3 bottle from Walmart and it's oil based. And uh, it says it could come from cat, from cod, ha haddock or pollux. Like two of those are tasty. Cod sucks. So. <laughs> Wait a second. If you cook it right, now uh, cod is is nowhere near as tasty as haddock and pollock. Have you ever tried them? Yes. Oh, uh, they're so much more tasty. Cod is good, but they are better. They're way better. I make I make uh, oh, teriyaki sauce to go with the cod. So, well, and garlic, lots yeah. of garlic. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have a queue in the back uh, with your new place? Because. Yeah, Karen, or no, I do. You cause, know, because Karen's like, you got, you got to take me because Joel has to cook for me. He promised. I, I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna call a plumber so I can hook it up to the natural gas, so I don't have to worry about running out of propane. For propane all Never the time. Again. Yeah, propane and propane accessories, Hank. Hank isn't around here. He's I don't know where the hell he is. <sighs> <sighs> so, does anybody have any questions on the uh, on what we discussed? I'm not going to go back to the beginning and do it all over again, but you know, it's I, I got no problems with showing off the the elements that I need to show off. Oh, Duck, I am so sorry. I just read what Duck said about uh, the ten years thing. Uh, no, nah, I would have to, had to have slapped the doctor. I was like, "Listen, Doc, you gonna have to get on this a lot faster than ten years. Ten years." Let me tell you what's going to happen in 10 years. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, Doug. That is a long time. That's, that really sucks, too. So, yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm, I'm yeah, glad was right, though. Yeah. That, that's the thing. The doctors, you know, they, they really, uh, I think my favorite doctor told me, it's like, well, you just got to learn to live with the pain. It's like, oh, come over here. Give me something heavy. We'll see how you like being in my yeah, position. I'll learn to live with this foot up your can. That's what I'm <laughs> so I'm going to break my foot up of, of your, up in your hoop and you see how you stumble around. So it's, it, it, it's, um, it's an unfortunate thing. Because when uh, when a particular doctor is out of his depth, you have to find a better doctor. But they they don't t they tell you no, there's nobody better. There's always somebody better. There's always somebody. Yeah, that is true. Wait, wait Kui Gun Jin. There's always a bigger fish. Come here. Are we I'm trying to show off the dog or the cat? The dog. Ah. The the deeper one. The that's the cat. The is the puppy. So I'm used to doing that when I want my horse to go. Yeah, which is funny because she will actually come running into. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Look who's here. Ah, oh, hi guys. Hi. Hello. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's okay. So. I did. I didn't know. I, I. I didn't even think about it. And Joel said, "Is she going to join us?" And I thought. I, I said, "Well, no, because she had dentistry. Wait, she didn't have it today. Maybe she wants it." So. That I, I dropped you the link and it's like okay I gotta run because we gotta start so but there it is. Uh, hi, baby. Oh look at the puppy. Sorry. That's okay. Look at her. Who is that? Oh, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> kisses. All right, baby. I'll let you down. You're all wet. It's my night. So I, so uh, Duck, you got any questions? Any comments? Since you are you are only person watching today, I'm hoping people will watch later because they usually do. It's really surprising how many people watch this after uh, after it's done and and set in stone. I love your galaxy thing going on there. Oh. 
Thank you. Um, <laughs> I have makeup on, but I look gothic as all hell. So that's why I'm not doing the video right now. So. <laughs> that's okay. You missed, you, uh, you, I'm sure you saw it, but you missed it live whole antenna thing going on I have. Yeah, I saw the <laughs> antenna thing. There, there it is. There's one right there. I feel like my favorite Martian. Ah! There you go, Sean. That was for you. You know, I'm, now I'm trying to remember the, the, the theme song to it, and I can't. It suddenly escaped me because you mentioned it. But I, when we were, here's a funny thing. When we were on vacation at Legoland, uh -huh. I met a guy who could have been, uh, could, could have been Bray Walston's lookalike. Oh, really? Yeah, at the pool at the castle in Legoland. It was uh, the Lego castle. Was I was shocked. I said, Did "Anybody ever tell you, you look like Ray Walston?" And he, he's, um, he laughs, and, and we proceed to talk about it. And then Karen comes over, and says, "Hey, he looks like the the guy, the Martian," and we're laughing. Uh, <laughs> it's like welcome to five minutes ago yeah it was hilarious and she he says i get that a lot and people just keep walking up and saying the same thing she couldn't remember it's like what's that guy's name and, I, and we at the same time i said bray walston <laughs> she goes who <laughs> the guy you're talking about ray walston <laughs> this is funny. Mm -hmm. It's I, I I love the vacation and some of the funny the funnier bits is, is I should have journaled it all because it was funny, it was hilarious. Oh, and the bees they, they were just um because the wind had shifted they were all over like they, they kept on coming over to inspect us yeah. not everybody by the pool but just us and it was just like what what do we smell good what the hell is this all about and. They kept landing on my head. I'm like, I don't want to go underwater because I don't want to drown the thing. And I go over to the edge of the pool and, and wait until it would fly off and, and then come back. Because <laughs> there was a lot of dead bees in the pool. And they were just like, yeah, we don't, we, we're thirsty, but we don't know where to go. It's like, my head ain't going to give you a drink. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, unfortunately, you probably missed the whole thing. But th this was the... Oh gosh, let me change the camera so you can see. This was what I'd set up. It's a bit too complicated for him, to be honest. Oh, okay. Too much math. Sean, why don't you make it the full screen, please? <laughs> I will, right Thank now. You. Sorry. It, it takes several button pushes. This oh, is really good. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, and uh, this is the the the. the, the chalice the candle the um yeah no duck i totally understand you're you're more shamanic the whole dancing thing i get it trust me this is this is mostly because i was uh, uh, janice got confirmation that this was a really good idea for me to go over for quite a few people yeah and so so i i ran with that sorry janice go ahead no no it's 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 because it's for other people that definitely need to set up protection in their house one of them being a a good friend of mine that Sean's helped out a few times, but there's there's other people out there that need to, uh, you know, make sure that their house is um, <laughs> not being muckied with while they're sleeping or just doing day to day stuff. So yeah. Oh, so you're asking why do you call on um, external entities? The elements are actually not external. Okay. They're actually not external at all. These en the entities that are out there are representations of what's within you. That's the intonation of above, below, within, without. It's from the, the saying, as above, so below, which you find is uh, in quantum entanglement, you find that that's the case. And what you're basically asking is for what is without you to come and commune with what is within you. And all the elements are within you. So basically you're, you're lining up the representation of what's within with what is without and so you're not actually asking for external entities and the elements themselves were created by uh the light in order to help you to do the job that you're trying to do to make it more so and more accessible what's within you by speaking with the representations of what's without you and that's uh as, that's actually just uh, an intonation for lighting the candle um and that's an archangel uh michael it's uh, basically just uh, making sure that you're not calling on a different flame or a different fire that could be utilized in a negative fashion. So it's like a, a blessing itself. 
No, it's it's all the entire thing about uh, thaumaturgy is as above, so below, within and without, and uh, basically making yourself rise to uh, to the vibrational levels of the eternal and the and the more ancient. Hope that helps. Sorry, I'll unmute Joel. I don't think he can unmute himself. There we go. Oh, thank you. I was like just rambling on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the YouTube. He's like, I'm adding like, to this talking, <laughs> Just kept talking. Uh, the one thing that you want to remember is there's connection with. Uh, we are a reflection of the of the universe. Our makeup. We are made of stardust. Our makeup. Uh, no matter what. Um, what, uh, uh, how you, you, what you follow, we are all still like are a mirror of what's outside. So whatever is out there is actually within us. And you go into yourself to, to commune with those things that are considered to be outside of us, but it's not the outside of us. That, that's why the intonation of uh, as above, so below, with, above, below, within, without. You're you're basically trying to to uh, raise yourself to the more the the greater energy level of what's without you yeah. by communing with it. That's that's one of the things I was explaining. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of similarities between thaumaturgy and shamanism, but the uh... Uh, so the angel thing, I guess you could think of it as calling like on your spirit guides or uh, um, your totems. It's pretty much the same thing. In the case of the, the, the fire of Archangel Michael, it's just making sure that you're calling on holy or sacred flame instead of just, you know, an average everyday spark. Like I said. <laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> she is playing with Melody right now. See her? Okay. okay. <laughs> it looks like she's trying to eat my ear. <laughs> yeah, we needed a dog a long time ago. Well, actually, we it wasn't a long time ago. This is the one that we needed. Her attitude and her personality is pretty amazing. We're pretty lucky with these. Yeah. Yeah, our animals are pretty good. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk bad. So much attitude. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up a little early because we actually started dead on time for once, just for once. So, okay, everybody, if you like what we do here, please like comment share and subscribe and if you haven't clicked that bell icon please do so youtube is uh, on a weekly basis is actually clicking uh all the bell icons for people and they're unclicking your notifications so if you're not getting notified that's the reason why just look at the bottom of the screen and take a look and you'll actually see that there's um that you will that there's a little bell icon down there and if it isn't filled in or it has a little little wavy symbols on either side you're not going to get any of the notices from us also uh we still accept uh, donations if you want to give any uh, and uh yeah there's no requirement but we do appreciate it and thank you we're actually over 200 subscribers if you hadn't I noticed we about to say that yeah. <laughs> sorry let me, let, me, let me expand this real quick sorry yeah we're at 203 i think I, I don't even know what to say i was on there and i saw it and i was like yes that should be happening. That is a thing. I might even have the celebratory drink for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So until we uh, next we meet, uh, everyone, stay blessed. Love you all. Um, thank you for all of your support. It's been wonderful, especially through the, the rough times. Um, and uh, I hope you guys like the new night. If not, let me know in the comments. Looking forward to seeing you all again next time. Good night. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice.